faculty and staff, proud parents, understanding partners, mom, dad, the love of my life, Yvette, and lastly, you, dear classmates of the class of MBA uh, 13G. Good afternoon. I'm truly blessed and honored to be here today and to have this opportunity to speak to you a little bit of how the last 10 months have changed me and what kind of impact they've had on me. I'm also truly blessed and honored to be part of probably the only graduation ceremony in the entire world of a top-ranked school where the number of students present are as many as the professors on campus. <laughs> as we prepare to part ways uh, with INSEAD, I'd like to share two stories that have shaped up uh, while I was here as a Singapore lifer. One story about the past and another story about the future. And no, you're not allowed to take a minute to structure your thoughts, ask clarifying questions, or use any of the frameworks that we learned and practice excessively while we were trying to get into the real world. You cannot use the Porter's five forces, the three C's, or the four P's. But sticking to, sticking to the letters of the alphabet, I'd like to talk to you about two important E's. That is the story about the past, entitlement and expectations. In the fall of last year, we all walked in through the gates of INSEAD, proudly carrying our completed sense of entitlement. Each one of us was an accomplished leader, a successful entrepreneur, a consultant that was on track to become the greatest partner ever in the history of consulting firms. At that point in time, we believed we've seen it all. Corporate turnarounds, complex financial transactions, reshaping of businesses, and every single one of us, and you can admit it, indisputably claimed that we had amazing and tremendous impact in our previous careers. If we didn't believe this, the mere fact that INSEAD has actually admitted us was good enough to justify the sense of impact. Now, two weeks into the program, this sense of entitlement started to water down in a painful and a humbling experience. Two weeks into the program where we're sitting, like today, right next to the, break, the, the best and the brightest minds out there, and we unfortunately realized that we were not as great as we thought to be. And the people right next to us were way better than us, way better. Take, for example, the loud Canadian guy, who you all know, who speaks full Mandarin, and who has better skills, better social skills than the great Gatsby. Or the other guy, the Indian financial analyst, who was so brilliant that sometimes we all wondered whether this person invented financial accounting. <laughs> <laughs> With this humbling experience, and as it went through the periods, we realized that having INSEAD on our CV was not enough. We got the things from all the consulting firms and the top uh, jobs that we always wanted to have, and this melody of numerous rejections actually sounded as a bitter, never-ending refrain. Now, the refrain turned out to be a beautiful music to our ears as we learned and uh, practiced our skills and knowledge within the classroom. For as our sense of entitlement subsided, Hi there. <laughs> our skills, our skills and knowledge became more refined, and our understanding of the world around us became sharper. Somewhere during this program in the forests of Ponty and the bustling life here in Singapore, we traded entitlement for expectations. Expectations of us, of our own performance, of the performance of our classmates around us. Expectations that were substantiated by, uh, by our new command of business practices, successes and failures in the past and the present, and understanding what is possible in the future. As we advanced our collective and individual knowledge, we hit a point when we turned our backs on entitlement and we faced and embraced this attitude that we could and should do better. Our new mantra was so pronounced that even as most of you voted me in as one of today's speakers, and by the way, Baldaniabat, I hope I pronounced it right. Each one of you met me and instead of saying congratulations or good luck, you just pointed your fingers at me and said, I voted for you. It better be good. <laughs> Today we walk out of those doors and 
we re-enter the world proudly branded as in Seattle alumni. As we say our goodbyes, I urge you to forget anything that has to do with entitlement. The entitlement that we once had, the entitlement that once we wanted to derive from this MBA experience. And instead, we should focus on the expectations and responsibilities that come with graduating from this fine institution. Which leads me nicely into my second point for today. This is the story about the future. Some of you might have heard parts of it. Steve Jobs once remarked uh, at a, in a speech at a smaller school somewhere on the West Coast <laughs> that we can never <laughs> that we can never connect the dots looking forward. We can only connect the dots looking backward. Now allow me to twist that a little bit. NCAT's academic value is unquestionable, but its true core lies within its marked diversity. A myriad of nationalities, experiences, individuals, uh, most notably a host of English accents, all blended together in the campuses in Fonti, in Singapore, in Abu Dhabi, even Wharton, and Kellogg. The diversity runs so deep that you have people from this class who graduated from a small high school and a small town in Bulgaria, went on to study in the United States and ventured into an MBA program in Asia to stand in front of you today and deliver a speech in a language that his parents do not speak. Or the French pilot who will go on to be a great consultant. Or the Singaporean girl who will change the world by educating low-skilled workers. These personal stories are endless and they are knitted into the fabric of INSEAD, which makes it the leading international business school. Before coming here, each one of us had a set of unique experiences and we followed a different path. But while our individual stories prior to INSEAD are distinct, our post-INSEAD stories and destinies are shared. Exactly 10 months ago, we were sitting here and we were soaking in all the wisdom from the welcome addresses. And I would like to remind you of some of the words that Professor Bearden, who sits in the back right there, shared with us at that point. Going forward, as we build our individual and personal stories, we will irrevocably become parts of the memory books of everyone else around us. Ten months later, we realize that the journey begins now. Tomorrow we will spread across the globe, and we will pursue our dreams individually, but we will remain connected in our plights. I am honored to be part of a group, together with you, that can potentially challenge what Steve Jobs said. Because the dots are not just ideas or achievements or steps or titles. They are people, just like you and me, just like Livia, Rajesh, Alessio, even. People who cannot and might not be able to connect looking backwards, but can conceive of ways to connect looking forward by envisioning ideas, executing on them together, and all the while deriving uh, power from the cherished memories, experiences, and the vast network from Asia. In just a few minutes, we will walk, we will receive our cherished diplomas, and at that moment in time, we will turn the page to commence a new chapter in our lives. A chapter that has all the amazing things in its unscripted pages and detailed footnotes and exhibits, as you might know, at the end of it. A chapter that we have the control of not only reading, but co-writing together. So here we are, for one last time, as students, at the end of our 10 months journey and at the end of my short speech. And as we have learned, every case and story should end with a summer. So here it is. Dear classmates, let us live up to our own expectations from us and from our uh, fellow classmates as we connect the green in Seattle dots, the dots from the world for the world. Thank you and congratulations. <laughs>